is a part of human emotion that people try hard to get rid of. Now the thing is, when we are going through a painful situation, it is very hard to control ourselves. And the way that we deal with calamity right at the time it just happened is different from how you deal with it one month or one year down the road. In this video, I'm going to share with you three tools to stay calm when the pain is fresh. Let's take a look at the statement of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Patience is at the first strike of calamity." This is such a profound description of how human psychology works when they get hurt. When a person hears the news that a loved one has passed away or when someone tries to insult us, we can be very reactive at the moment. Our body at that time is going through survival mode. To react quickly to a physical or psychological threat, our brain would suppress the higher cognitive, which is responsible for reasoning, judgment, decision making, and problem solving. This is because higher thinking works a lot slower than the primal thinking brain which is in charge of defending yourself instantly from dangers this is why when you get hurt you may see yourself doing or saying something that you don't usually do so prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the way you deal with a situation when it is still fresh will actually show how patient you are the first tool to help you control yourself in difficulty is to do the right thing if you know you would say something hurtful do something inappropriately then flee from it until you can calm down prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you are angry be silent when you are angry be silent so remain silent or even stay away from other people if confronting them is too overwhelming for you now you should not isolate yourself completely in the long term it is not healthy but at that specific moment it is okay to seek solitude to bring yourself back avoid making big decisions because you might not get the best out of it let's look at the story of Musa's mom at the time when Pharaoh is trying to kill all of the newborn male babies from Israel because Pharaoh dreamed that he will be defeated by an Israel boy Allah has instructed the mother of Musa alayhi salam to cast him into the river while promising her that Allah will return Musa and appoint him to be the messenger one day Musa's mom followed Allah's inspiration to cast him into the river and Pharaoh's wife ended up picking Musa from it. Now imagine your child is in the hand of your enemy who wants to kill him. How would you feel? Allah described that at that time the heart of Musa's mother became empty and she was about to disclose his identity to Pharaoh. But Allah has strengthened her heart and kept her amongst the believers. Pay attention here. Musa's mother got so overwhelmed that she cannot think straight at that time. But before that, she has done her part of submitting to Allah. Now we as believers will not receive the direct inspiration from Allah like Musa's mother, but we have the Quran and Hadith as our guidance. So when we try to do the right thing by following Allah's and His Messenger's command, we can leave the rest to Allah. That brings me to point number Number two, make dua. There are many prophets in the Quran and each of them are tested in multiple ways. When facing trials, they would call out to Allah. Like Musa alayhi salam supplicated, My Lord, indeed I am in desperate need of whatever good you would send down to me. Or the dua of Ayyub alayhi salam, Indeed, adversity has touched me, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. The common thing you can see in these prophets' methods of supplication is tawakul, just in Allah. To acknowledge that no matter what they do, they cannot fully control the situation. And Allah is the best of planners. Human beings naturally like to solve problems, to control their lives. So if an undesirable situation comes, we often ask what we can do to work it out. Of course, it is good to try to make a move. But there are times when we don't have that power to change the situation. So dua will do two things. It helps you remove the anxiety when being out of control. If I cannot solve the problem itself, at least I can constantly put my work in supplicating to Allah, asking for His assistance. Dua also gives you tranquility in your heart, even in the most painful situations, because you know that you have done your best, and you are certain that the best of planners will take care of the rest and grant you things that are good for you. 
The third strategy is to train your mind. When you look at athletes, they can win a competition not just because they perform well in the contest, it is also because of their perseverance in training and challenging their limits. The stronger a person is, the higher tolerance they have to pain, and 50 pounds would feel a lot lighter to an athlete than an untrained person. So we can learn to take a trial more lightly by training our minds. Here's some mindset that help you to be prepared for a calamity. The first mindset is that this life is a test. The more Allah love you, the more difficult your test will be. And we should not rely too much on Allah's creations because they themselves are not perfect. It is possible for someone to hurt you, even if they are your closest friends or family members. This mindset will help you not to be too surprised when an undesirable circumstance actually hits you. The second mindset is to understand that you don't know what Allah knows. When you get on a train not knowing where the train is taking you, you will try to get out of the train as quickly as possible because that feeling of the unknown is haunting and draining. But what if Allah is the one who is directing that train? It is going to be a different story, right? Now, even if you don't know exactly where you will end up, but you trust that the captain is directing you to the best place for you, then you would be chilling on the train, enjoying the trip. As long as you ensure that you are getting on the right train, directed by the right captain, that's what matters for you. Especially when you have no knowledge of traveling, right? So putting the trust in Allah in an unknown situation is a must for your heart to be at rest. Allah say, but perhaps you hate a thing and it is good for you. And perhaps you love a thing and it is bad for you. And Allah knows while you do not know. The third mindset is to look at the positive outcomes. One positive effect of trials is it is a training field to help you become stronger. One time I underwent a very overwhelming situation. Before I started showing my hijab on social media with you guys, I have been hiding to protect myself from harsh judgment coming from relatives. So I got very emotional at one point in my life when I see things are going nowhere. And you know, one of my dreams is to spread Islam to Vietnam one day, just like how it has reached Malaysia and Indonesia, subhanAllah. And my wali, my guardian, who is also my Islamic teacher, he told me, Hey Marwa, you want to spread Islam to Vietnam, right? This is what you would get. For you to be strong enough to take that, you need to overcome this. So for those of you who have dreams, who want to achieve things in your life, conquering pains and challenge is your inevitable path. I also look at the difficulty to be the chance for us to raise our rank and erase our sins. We might aim to get a high rank in Jannah, but if we don't have that many bucks in the bank, if these numbers of deeds are still not enough, sometimes Allah put trials in your life to raise you to that level. So it's like a huge discount for a high quality item. SubhanAllah, it is a great great blessing from Allah if we can stay patient and be content with his decree. Prophet ﷺ said, Be mindful of Allah and you will find him in front of you. Recognize and acknowledge Allah in times of ease and prosperity and he will remember you in times of adversity. And know that what has passed you by was not going to befall you and what has befallen you was not going to pass you. And know that victory comes with patience, relief with affliction, and hardship with ease. May Allah give us patience to overcome whatever test that He is going to give us. May Allah increase us in our strength and erase our sin and bring us to the highest level in Jannah. Inshallah, in the next video, I will share with you long-term strategies to help you come out from pain with strengths. In the meantime, please help me share my content and benefits others, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.